Welcome to Premium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 106 of ASP.NET video series. In this video, we'll discuss about adding custom events to user controls. This will enable us to understand events and delegates much better. To get the most out of this video, I would strongly recommend to watch parts 104 and 105 from the ASP.NET video series and parts 36 to 39 from the C-Sharp video series. I have included the links for the ASP.NET and C-Sharp video series here for your convenience. Now, most people actually feel events and delegates are a complex subject and they are difficult to understand. I'll try my best to make these concepts as simple as possible, but trust me, if we get the basics right, events and delegates are not really that difficult to understand. There are two very important points to keep in mind when designing events and delegates. Now, delegates are function pointers and their syntax is very much similar to that of a function, whereas events are variables of type delegates with an event keyword in front of them. Now if these points are not very clear at the moment, don't worry, they will be much clearer as we progress in this video. In a previous session we have designed this calendar user control which is a very simple user control. Now as the control stands at the moment, it doesn't have any custom event. So this is the control that we have designed. If you look at this, the implementation of this control, this is pretty simple and straightforward. If you haven't watched the previous sessions, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. All this user control has at the moment is you know this custom property and we have seen how to retrieve that custom property on the web form where we are using this cust you know calendar user control so when i click this button within the button click event what we are doing we are retrieving the selected date and that's the custom property that we have created within the calendar user control and then printing the date that the user has selected okay now in this video we want to create an event for the calendar user control Okay, now what event do we want to create? Now look at this. Whenever I click on this image button, the visibility of the calendar changes. If it's visible, it becomes hidden. If it's hidden, it becomes visible. And along the same lines, when I select a date, now the calendar is visible. When I select the date, as soon as I select the date, the calendar becomes invisible. So the calendar visibility is changing within this user control. So whenever the calendar visibility is changing within the user control, I want to raise a calendar visibility changed event. Okay, now this is in line with the, sta the standard ASP.NET drop-down list control, for example. Now within the drop-down list, whenever you change a selection, drop-down list selection changed event is raised. So along the same lines, whenever the visibility of the calendar changes within the calendar user control, we want to raise calendar visibility changed event. Let's see how to do that. Now there are five simple steps to raise a custom event from a control. Obviously, the first step is to create this class, calendar visibility changed event arguments class. For short, we are calling it args. Now, this class is going to contain the event data. Okay, now this may not be very clear at the moment, but don't worry, as we progress again in this video, you're going to understand the purpose of this class. This is going to be a very simple class. Okay, so this is called calendar visibility changed event args class. And we'll also understand the reason for this naming convention, calendar visibility changed event arguments. Okay, we'll understand why we are naming it in such a way. Okay, now let's go ahead and create this class. Now I'm going to create this class. Uh, you know, usually in real reality, we, we will have a separate file for that class. But for simplicity's sake, I'm going to create this class within the user control file itself. So I already have this class, so I'm going to minimize that and then create this class. So public class calendar visibility changed event args. Now this class is going to contain the calendar visibility changed event data. Now what data will this event going to contain? You know, the calendar visibility changed event. Okay, it will contain true or false. If the calendar is visible, you know, it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. Obviously, to hold that visibility data, we need a Boolean field. So I'm going to have a Boolean field within this class. So private Boolean, and I'm going to call that is calendar visible. Okay, so that's the private field. Now to expose this private field to the external world, we need a public property. So I'm going to create that. So public Boolean, I'm going to call that is calendar visible. 
and this is only going to be you know a read only property so it's going to have only the get accessor so whatever is the value that is going to be present in this private field that will be returned by this property so return this dot is calendar visible okay a private field and to expose that private field to the external world we have a public property and then obviously we need to initialize this private field somehow so I'm gonna have a constructor for the class which will initialize that field so I'm gonna say public a constructor will have the same name of the class so I'm gonna copy that and then into the constructor we will pass you know whether if the calendar is visible or not so is calendar visible now we will use that incoming parameter into the constructor to initialize our class private field so this dot underscore is calendar visible is equal to whatever field that's coming into the constructor so a very simple class this class is going to contain our event data whether if the calendar is visible or not so this property will return true if the calendar is visible otherwise it will return false and this constructor is used to initialize whenever the event occurs we will we will create an instance of this class and pass that you know wherever it has to be passed you will understand that in a bit so a very simple class which is going to contain our event data that's step one okay now let's look at what step two step two create calendar visibility changed event handler delegate so we are coming to delegates now so what's a delegate now from this point if you look at this delegates are function pointers and their syntax is very much similar to that of a function and why do we use delegates now let's see the one of the main purposes of delegates okay now on this web form if you look at this I have the standard ASP.NET button control now this button control has this button click event now one of the main purposes of delegates is to hook up event handlers with events of controls now there are three things here to understand you have the control itself which is the button and the button has the click event and then obviously when that event occurs there is a method which is handling that event which is nothing but button one underscore click okay now how do we hook up this event handler button one underscore click one with button click event that is done with the help of a delegate so button one dot click look at that that's the click event you can see the symbol as well the lightning blue bold symbol so button dot click and then to hook up this event handler look at this to hook up the button one this event handler with the click event of the button one control we are using this event handler delegate this is actually the delegate look at this you know the way we are uh, hooking it up using plus equals so we are registering this method with the click event of the button one control using this event handler so what is this event handler let me right right click on that and go to definition now look at this this is actually a delegate okay so this delegate now look at look at what we are passing to the constructor of this delegate we are passing the name of the function so this delegate will be pointing to this function whenever this event occurs this method is automatically invoked okay and how are we doing that using plus equals and a delegate and now if you actually look at that event handler delegate look at that that's the event handler and if you look at the event handler delegate look at the signature it, it looks very much similar to that of a method a method will have a return type in this case it's void and then it is taking two parameters one is of type object in the, and the other one is of type event arguments okay and then look at that it has a delegate keyword in front of it so a delegate are function pointers and their syntax is very much similar to that of a function the only difference between the function syntax and delegate syntax is that a delegate will have a delegate keyword and it ends with a semicolon whereas a function will have a function body and it will not have a delegate now since delegates are function pointers you know the delegate will have a signature and the function will have a signature if this delegate has to point to a function then the delegate signature has to you know match or the function signature has to match that of the delegate so look at this function it has void and it takes these two parameters object and event args 
okay and the delegate signature matches with that okay so similarly we need a delegate you know basically to point to to hook up our event to you know every event handler method so that's the reason why we need to create a delegate so the next step is to create you know a delegate and and look at the name that we are using calendar visibility changed event handler now if you look at this here it says generic i mean event handler just event handler now if we use this delegate then our event cannot have any data within that so if your event doesn't have any data then we can use this generic event handler but then the event that we are going to raise is going to contain a boolean flag a boolean data true or false true if the calendar is visible otherwise false so we need to have that event data so if that's the case we need to have our own delegate and then just to match up with uh, you know msdn uh, uh, naming convention i'm going to call this calendar visibility changed event handler okay so let's go ahead and create that so let's create a delegate calendar visibility changed event handler so again a delegate is a function pointer its signature is very much similar to that of a function so a function will have an access modifier a delegate will have an access modifier so public and it's going to be void and i'm going to call this calendar visibility changed event handler and then this needs to have two parameters now look at the delegate of the you know the event the microsoft event handler delegate it's having object sender and event args i'm going to copy that and paste that here but then with i don't want to use this event args class that's because my event is going to contain some additional event data so i'm going to use my class that we have created here calendar visibility changed event args and another thing that i have forgot to mention is you know since this is going to contain event data it's a very good practice to make it inherit from event arguments class okay because this is the common uh you know the the base class which provides all that functionality to this class and then now so to capture that event data i'm going to use this object instead of the generic event args okay and then i'm going to call this i'm going to put it uh, a delegate keyword here so this makes it as a delegate so i have a delegate now so that's the second step now what's the third step create calendar visibility changed event so this is most important now what are events events are nothing but they are variables of type delegates with an event keyword in front of them now just imagine if we want to create an integer variable how would we do that all we do is uh, int i is equal to whatever so i is a variable of type integer so if i say int i is equal to 10 then i is a variable of type integer okay so now we are saying an event is a variable of type delegate with an event keyword in front of it so we already have a delegate here now i want to create an event okay now this event we want that to be raised from this calendar user control so you have to create that event inside the calendar user control but you know look at this this class is created outside of that calendar user control because this is a class by itself okay and then this is a delegate again delegates are types just like classes and interface they are reference types okay so they exist on their own they you know you don't have to create them inside the calendar user control class but then an event belongs to a class so the event has to be inside that calendar user control class so let me expand this calendar user control class and then create our event so what is an event an event is a variable of type delegate so how do we create a variable of type delegate so i'm going to create public and uh, you know if you are creating an integer variable you will say public int i but i'm not going to create a variable of type integer instead i'm going to create a variable of type calendar visibility changed event handler delegate so i'm going to call that calendar visibility changed event handler and i'm going to call the event as calendar visibility changed so this is a variable of 
type this delegate. Now if you want to make that an event, what all you do is prefix an event keyword there. That's it. So we have the event created. That's the third step. Create calendar visibility changed event. And what's the fourth step? Now I'm going to, I'm not going to talk about the fourth step right now. We'll come back to that in just a bit. Now the final step is to actually raise the event. So how do we raise the event? That's another important thing uh, to keep in mind. And when do we raise the important? Uh, when do we raise this event? Whenever the visibility of the calendar is changed. And when does the visibility of the calendar changes? There are two ways in which the calendar visibility changes. Whenever we click the image button or whenever we select the date within the calendar. Okay, so during both the cases, we want to raise this particular event. So how do we raise that event? So where is the calendar visibility changing whenever the user clicks the image button within that calendar user control? And how do we raise this event? To raise the event, look at this. Whenever the calendar visibility is changed to false, now the first thing to raise the event is we have to create an instance of this class because this class is going to contain the event data. Now look at this. When we raise the event, to the event handler method, we have to pass the event data, whether the calendar is visible or invisible. And this class is capable of holding that data. Okay, so let's create an instance of this class before we raise that event, calendar visibility changed event args. And I'm going to call that uh, visibility, visibility changed event data just trying to give it a meaningful name and then look at the constructor it it takes a boolean para parameter whether you know uh, stating whether the calendar is visible or not we have just turned the visibility of the calendar false so i'm going to fo pass false into that constructor so what's going to happen now this object is created and all we need to do right now is to raise the event so how do we raise the event what is the name of the event that we have created calendar visibility changed event to raise the event all you do is you call that calendar visibility changed event look at the symbol we got the lightning bolt symbol indicating that it's an event and we are raising the who is raising this event this user control is raising calendar user control is raising this event so that's the sender so that's why I use this keyword here because this class an instance of this class will raise the event for example when I drag and drop this calendar user control on a web form we get calendar user control one so that's an instance of this class so basically this class is raising the um, you know this event calendar visibility changed event so sender will be this class and then what is the next parameter that we have to pass the calendar visibility changed event arguments data event data and we have a class of that type now it should be clear now why we have created this class in step one because when we raise the event we want to pass the event data to that event okay so that's the reason why we have created this class so I'm going to pass that object to that event that's it we are actually done okay but then you know, an important thing, there are two things, you know, to make this class uh, look much better that we have to do. The first thing is, you know, you have to really check if, before we raise the event, we have to check if the event is null or not null. Now, why do we have to do this null check? Don't worry about this. We are going to talk about this in the next video session when we'll discuss about actually consuming this event on a web form later. Okay, so about this condition, don't really worry. So that's the first change we have to do. Another change is we don't want to be raising events directly like this. Okay, another better way of raising this event is actually by using fourth step create a protected virtual method to raise the event and I'll tell you in a minute why we have to do that using a method you know indirectly rather than doing it directly like this now doing it directly like this is not wrong but then it will be much better if we actually created a create a protected virtual method to raise that event okay so let's do that so instead of raising the event like this directly I'm going to create one simple protected virtual method within this calendar um, user control class. So I'm going to call this protected 
virtual and it's going to be void and I'm going to call this method you know just to be so calendar visibility changed is the event so I'm going to call this method on calendar visibility changed method so that's the name of the method and this method you know since we have to pass when we are raising the event we will pass this event data so that will be the argument I mean a parameter that's coming into this method or you can simply say se okay so now this method will take the responsibility of raising the event so if calendar visibility changed that's the name of the event so let me copy that it's a long name if calendar visibility changed is not equal to null okay now again don't worry why are we checking for this null as I told you we'll be talking about that in the next video session when we actually consume this event and then what will this do this will just raise that event so this class is raising the event so I use this keyword and then we pass an instance of this whatever parameter that is coming into this method okay so I'm going to use this protected method to raise the event I'll explain why we are using this method and not going to do it directly like this in just a bit okay first let me complete the implementation so instead of this line I'm just going to call that method now on calendar visibility changed so let's go ahead and call that so on calendar visibility changed all we have to pass to this now is that ev visibility changed event data so I'm gonna pass that there and along the same lines let's copy these lines whenever the visibility is changed to true at that point of time we want to change that to true okay so whenever the image button is clicked you know we are raising that event and there is another case when we have to raise the event whenever the selection in the calendar changes you know we retrieve the selected date populate the text box and we are immediately turning the visibility to false so even in this case I want to raise that event so I'm gonna copy that there and then raise that event paste it here and as soon as we turn the visibility to false what we are doing we are also raising that event so we are passing in false so that's it we are done okay now let's understand why we are doing this why didn't we you know actually directly raise the event itself that's because notice the signature of this method the on calendar visibility changed method it's a protected virtual method meaning protected meaning this method is going to be available for any class that's going to derive from this calendar user control and also this method is marked virtual meaning the derived class can actually override the implementation of this method and why is it important and useful for the derived classes because let's say I have a class I'm going to have maybe special calendar user control class or something like this public let's call it as let me show you practically so public class let's call the special calendar control or something like that and this one is going to inherit from that calendar user control class okay if that's the case now since this method is a protected virtual method now this method can be overridden in this derived class right so if I just type override keyword and then if I select you know whatever is the method on we should see our method on calendar visibility change look at that okay so I'm overriding on calendar visibility changed method now here look at this the event in this if, if I'm using the special calendar control class anywhere else you know instead of using calendar user control now in this class I can you know the event the visibility calendar visibility changed event will be raised only when this line is executed now before that I can actually do whatever I want before raising the event I can do some additional work so that's the advantage of using a protected virtual method to raise the event rather than raising it directly it makes your derived classes you know more flexible 
you can change them the way you want you can create specialized versions of this calendar user control so we are just kind of keeping future in mind and designing our events that's why always whenever we raise events we create a protected virtual method so that the child classes can do some additional work before they actually raise the event okay so that's those are all the changes that we need to do so quickly re, if we quickly recap create this class which is going to contain our event data okay and create this delegate because we hook up event handlers to events using delegates and what are events in the first place events are variables of type delegates with an event keyword so we need a delegate to create an event so create the delegate then create the event and then use a protected virtual method to raise the event rather than directly raising it and we have understood the reason why we have to do it that way and finally raise the event itself and how are we raising that event using that protected virtual method on calendar visibility changed so we are calling that method passing in the event uh, the object that's going to contain the event data with all this let's go ahead and compile the solution so build solution build succeeded now on my web form I already have you know the calendar user control so at this point I should be able to uh, you know what is the ID of the calendar user control calendar one and look at this when I put in there and press dot we should see the event there calendar visibility changed event look at the symbol lightning bolt symbol in the next video session we'll actually discuss about two things you know what is uh, how to consume this calendar visibility changed event um, and then we'll also understand the reason of checking for null before raising the event so if you remember you know calendar user control in this virtual method which we are using we are actually checking if calendar visibility changed not equal to null only then we are raising this event okay what would happen if we don't check for null and directly raise the event we'll talk about this in our next video session on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day